Lucas Village, I can't see chat at all. Um, so let me pull you guys up. <laughs> this is kind of awkward. I am so sorry. And, oop, what am I clicking? What did I just click? everyone. Hello. How are you guys? Um, <laughs> like the title says, why is... Okay. I don't know why the chat is just broken on... Oh, there you go. There you go. Never mind. Never mind. I see you guys. Um, but hello. I didn't even grab my drawing tablet. I like just... Put it off to the side. I just finished eating, so that's why. Um, but yeah, I literally I put my plate to the side and started streaming. Um, but we're doing art. This is what I've got so far. Yes, this is what I've done so far. I've been working on this today instead of doing important things. Also, also, if you didn't know, my new vlog is out. At the channel um, cherry underscore logs that is out and you guys should check it out um, yeah <laughs> but I just finished this I didn't know if I wanted to go with orange as the uh, as the color I don't know I don't know but yes this is what I'm working Oop, I didn't mean to zoom in this is what I'm working on um, for those of you who have not seen yet <laughs> This was the last drawing I did. Um, the nose bothers me. I might change that right now. Even though I already uploaded this and everything, um, I am going to just, you know, <coughs> it's not even changing. Okay. We're just gonna like blend that out, even though even though I already posted this drawing, you know? But yes, this is the last drawing I did. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a trend going on. Also, also, I need to know. The skin tone. How does it look? Because to me, it looks normal. It looks like tan skin. Or brown skin in general. But then, like, for some reason, the colors on my phone are different than the colors on my laptop and I don't know if I made it too like orangey or if it does look like skin um, like normal <laughs> brown skin please let me know if it looks weird um, it looks normal to me so I'm gonna keep it that way uh, but yeah and if the flowers are too vibrant let me know too because again everything looks the same um, but I'm probably gonna add a filter just like so if you you can't really tell over here, but there is a filter that I added because the reference. Um, let me find the reference that I used. Was this? Um, I found it on Pinterest. There's the actual image is without the Vogue. This was an edit someone did. Um, but I had, I had um, yes. What was I saying? Oh yeah, it has like an, a warm tone to it, so I added this like filter to like give it that warm tone and so that everything kind of matches the color scheme, you know? Um, I wanted all the colors to kind of match together and so to do that I added a filter. Um, that's not what I meant to do. Also, also I have a new drawing tablet. So we're trying this out. It's really nice so far. It's nice that I got this because the pen for my other trying tablet was already like the, the nub was super tiny and I didn't have replacement nubs because I got it like second hand. Um, oh wow. I've had that when I was a sophomore in high school and I'm sophomore in university. Oh, <laughs> that was like three years ago. 
Three, four. About three or four years ago when I got my first, my other drawing tablet from one of my friends, I bought it off of her. Yep, buy it off of her and she just gave it to me. I don't remember. I don't remember. But yes, so this is what I'm working on. Um, I was gonna check it with the filter. That's what I was gonna do. Okay, well with that filter, no. And also it's, it's only half. Okay, it's kinda awkward. I thought it just didn't fully load, but no, it's, it is just only half. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I, I don't know if I'm gonna put, I probably am going to put a warm toned filter on it. But I don't know if I want it because like if I put a cool tone filter it also works but like I don't even know what I'm gonna do for the background <laughs> you know like it works with this one because all of the colors kind of did I had that color scheme in mind but this one I don't really this one like obviously this is more warmer. This was supposed to be black, but I didn't want to go full black, so I went bluish purple, like violet type. Um, but yeah, and like, obviously the line art isn't fully black either. It's, um, uh, <laughs> I ignore this. This was too, because the hair needed to be darker. It's like a gradient light brown to a dark brown. Um, and then I have a... I have to put it in black and white um, so that I could see my shadows because that's what I've learned to do. Um, some artists, what they'll do is they'll initially draw in black and white and then add the shadows. Um, but for mine, the reason I I put it in black and white is to see like my, my shading um, because obviously in a lot of my older art I I didn't go dark enough so all of the colors kind of were similar but here you can see that for the shading I do have spots where it is definitely darker and lighter so I have that gradient from dark to light and so my shadows actually are shadows you know so that's why I have a, a black and white gradient over it I did that I did the same thing with my other drawing, the, the, um, the other one, <laughs> the other one I did. Uh, I don't have it on here. It's on a flash drive. I had to move it, but, um, actually wait, no, it's probably is here, but it's not, it's the PNG. This one. I did that with this one. Let's copy this over. But the other J-Hope one, as you can see, there's like the shadows. Obviously, this one I could have worked on a little more, um, especially here with the shadows around the skin. Um, what the? Oh, I was like, what is that? But because of the fire and lighting, I didn't think I needed to go super dark because it's like, oh, well, there's reflections in the light, you know? Also, the Among Us belt, if anybody noticed that. <laughs> um, yeah. I, his belt looked like the Among, an Among Us character, so... I was gonna hide an Among Us in here, too. An Among Us crewmate. But, uh... I couldn't figure out where it would be reasonable. Where it would be logical. So, yeah. But yeah, I... I think I, I do like this line art style that I started... I did, I did it here. Obviously, with here, I didn't do the gradient. I did it based on the clothing and like where where the line art was. Um, so I went more reddish on the face. Sorry, I'm cold. It's been raining all day and I'm super cold. I'm so cold, I'm wearing slipper socks. Like they're slippers, but they're like, they act like socks. So they're more flexible. Um, I don't like wearing socks. So the fact that I'm wearing these is like a big deal. <laughs> um, that's how cold it is. I might get a blanket. Um, yeah, but yeah, so that's what I did. I also changed how I do hair, especially because his hair here, like you could see in, 
Hi, Nemo. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. I'm just going over like my art before I fin fully start. <laughs> Um, because I just- this is the newest drawing I did. Um, yeah. Oop, what did I do? Um, but yeah, so here- you can see his hair is kind of complex. It's kind of hard to understand the shapes. Ooh, uh, nice? <laughs> cool? Cool? Uh, I've been good. I'm cold. I'm actually- I think I'm gonna go get a- um, a blanket just so I could have because I'm cold. I'm like- in a short sleeve shirt. So, or maybe I'll put a hoodie because it's mainly my arms that are cold. I'll be right back. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I got. Uh, I didn't grab a hoodie. Hoodie. Um, I got a new sweater. You guys will never see this sweater though because it's- I got it from school. Um, which means- well it doesn't have my university on it, but like it was from an event, so you guys won't get to see this sweater. And it's more like a- it's a crew neck technically, but I call everything a sweater. <laughs> which makes some of- some people mad apparently. They're like, no, you have to call it the correct word. And I'm like, I don't care. Um, <laughs> cool, I guess. I'm not, I have asthma, so. Um, even without asthma, I'm just not a huge fan of like smoking in general, but you do you, you know? I'm not, I'm not gonna judge. <laughs> Ugh, this is, this is a lot better. So it is a little cold because it was like on my couch, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I just ate. I like got hungry late, but I made pork chops with mashed potatoes and it was so good. <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, as you can see with the hair, I like created a form. I created like the form here. Um, like around here, and then I just kind of went in. Here, let me see if I can turn off the... Yeah. Whew, sorry. Um, I kind of went in and, like, created the hair shape individually. So these were, like, individual strands that I drew in the sketch layer. Um, that's... Let me see. Let me see if I can- oh. Yeah, this is the original painting this was based on. So, like, a couple years ago I made a painting inspired by this drawing- this photo. Um, obviously it didn't come out correctly because I didn't know the proper techniques to doing portraits. Um, now I do. I am much smarter and a better artist. But yeah. <laughs> um, this was the original painting that I- I was like, I saw- I saw this on Pinterest and I was like, oh, I drew that. Let me try it again. Um, but yeah, see, you can see I like did all of that. Um, where's the hair? That's I'm already on the hair layer. Um, here we're gonna turn that off. But as you can see, where's the? I kind of like did the individual strands first, so that I could get like a an idea of where the the shape is and how it like is forming on his head and then that's how I ended up doing the uh the hair also like I love when my line art I could like take off the line art and it's like barely noticeable I love being able to do that like obviously not all of the edges are kind of actually whoa these edges are kind of the edges are kind of good <laughs> Obviously, like, details on the inside are a little rough, like, here. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Um, wow, these edges! Oh, I slipped. Quite literally, my hand slipped. <laughs> ooh, ooh! I mean, the hair is a little, like, incoherent. 
Sorry, this is like the first time looking in detail at the details um, without the line art. Oh, wow. Yeah, I like that you can't. <laughs> like, the difference isn't super, super. It's like kind of subtle. Um, obviously, the earring is kind of funky. But yeah, and look at that. I'm really proud of the eye. Like, you. Hello, Spotify? Did Spotify glitch for you guys, or was it just me? I don't know. Um, but yeah. Obviously, like, when you zoom out, you can't really see the details, but, like, I was drawing pixels on here. Look at that eye. I'm so proud of myself. I am just... Okay, anyways. <laughs> anyways, so this is the art. I thought I heard something. And this is the art piece I'm working on right now. Yes, obviously flowers on faces is a trend I like. Um, this was originally going to be an actual painting, but I wanted to try it out digitally first before I attempted anything on paper or canvas, technically. But yeah, and I like... I was in spot- <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the shirt was inspired <laughs> by... Uh, was it Sehun? Might be Sehun from EXO in the wolf music video. <laughs> because my friend had sent me a TikTok the other day um, where it's like K-pop songs, I would, wouldn't show uh, new K-pop fans or like I wouldn't use to introduce people to K-pop. Um, and it was like the boy group edition and it, <laughs> it was one of them. I saw his shirt and I was like, without the fuzz, like, it don't, it's not that bad of a shirt. And it also reminded me of, um, Jungkook, I think, had a shirt similar. But I think his was entirely kind of sheer. He just had an undershirt. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. But I feel like during either Blood, Sweat, and Tears or Fake Love era. Because those two make sense for him to wear that shirt. <laughs> um... No, the Dark and Wild album, like Danger era, may have been I'm trying to think, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like. There's a somebody wears a shirt that has like sheer fabric on the arms, and then it's like on the cuff. It's it's kind of like a button up, but the arms are definitely sheer. I'm not gonna switch it up right now. That's gonna bother me, but I'm not gonna switch it up right now. Um, yeah. Okay, so. So, like always, I start off shading and I put everything in a folder. Why? I don't know. I just like being able to turn on and off stuff. That's ugly. Okay, maybe not too ugly. No, that's ugly. I was gonna have them laying in grass. I was gonna have her laying in the grass. But now I don't know. Maybe I'll just do a gradient in the background. That's what I've defaulted to. Can't do backgrounds? Just do a gradient. You know? Who cares? Um, what was I gonna do? I was gonna start the shading. Um, like always, we start with the skin because rendering skin is something I always do first. Um, and the first thing we always add is blush. Um, yeah, I guess I could exp it's been a while since I've drawn on stream, so I guess I could explain. Um, so I usually add blush, um, to the nose and the cheek, obviously. Lips, which get fixed later. Ear, 
neck, um, and then elbows. There's not really an elbow. Sometimes shoulders. I haven't done a drawing where the shoulders are exposed. I forgot. I do. I'm like, especially on joints. Also, I messed up already. Ooh, not that far. Too far. Um, first. First things first. We duplicate the layer. That's what we gotta do. I always have the base layer and then the duplicated layer because I feel like it. That's better. Yeah. So, top of the ear. Nose, cheek. Obviously, you can't see the cheek because flowers. Um... Here, we'll turn off the flowers just so I can get a sense of exactly what it is I am doing. What is that? What is this top layer? Oh, this top layer is accents. We'll turn off accents for now. Yeah. Just so that we could see, like, the skin. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I... I don't know why these parts of the body I specifically choose to put blush. Also, I went with more of an orangey type blush. Um, what I normally do with blush is um, I get like the skin tone. And then I... Depending on the skin tone, if it's lighter skin tones, I definitely do go with a reddish pink. And then I like... Do, oh, that's way too bright. That's not what I normally do. I do like- that is also not what I do. What is the color I normally do? Why is this not looking how I normally- What do I- what- I have a color I normally default to- this color. I normally default to this color and then blend it with the skin tone. Um... To get blush. Oh, actually that kind of looks a lot better. Yeah. That original blush, no good. No good, no good. I like this a little more. Though, so maybe a little brighter. Yeah, I like that a little more. Yeah, that's what I typically do, though. I just, like... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to explain my process. So I'm gonna explain it as best I can. That's... I, I just like adding blush in all of these areas. Um... Because I can. That's, like, the main reason. Yeah, honestly, I don't know. I got- my- my art got featured in a Solar Sands video. He told me I should use more color, and so... Um, I added blush to everything. <laughs> yeah, that- that's honestly, like, the reasoning. That quite literally is the reason why I started adding Cause he, I think he meant he said he that I needed to add more like reddish tones because mine was too grayish. A lot of my shading was too grayish, and so when I started adding blush, I just started putting it in different places that I typically shaded, um, and then like joints and stuff for the fun of it. <laughs> I just thought it was fun, and so yeah, that that's honestly what I why I do it. He critiques my art, and then I took that critique, and it has stuck with me. <laughs> like, quite literally, the, the next art piece that I did after was, like, here, I'm gonna try to find it. Um, ooh, I don't know if I can find it. Wait, I'm logged into this profile. Um, I might be able to. Just because... Okay, no. The count is private. That's it. My old... Yes, KJ! Hello! Welcome! Um, I'm talking about my process. I was gonna show the, uh, the art piece I did after my art got featured in a Solar Sands video. <laughs> oh, you love my art streams? 
Well, I'm doing. I'm gonna end up doing a lot more art streams. I've been really getting into art. Um, again. <laughs> Especially. Spe <laughs> yes. The words are coming out of my mouth. Specifically, is what I wanted to say. I've been doing more BTS fan art of J Hope because J Hope is so fun to draw. He is just. This is two times in a row I've drawn him. Um, and I was looking back on my Instagram, and I was like, damn, I do, like, he's just so fun to draw him, and, um, honestly, I'd have to look back at all my art. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay, so, last week, or two weeks ago, I, um, I, um, I was talking with, uh, I was talking with one of my classmates, and we were talking about like different art, or, or just like our art in general, and how we've grown and stuff. And I mentioned my deviant art, and because we were like talking about all our old. Oh, it's on my deviant art. Okay, we're gonna show this. <laughs> I'm gonna show my deviant art. I know I'm getting sidetracked, and I do apologize, but, <laughs> but. <laughs> You guys need to see my old art on DeviantArt. I used to post on DeviantArt. Um, this is also how Solar Sands uh, saw my art uh, the first time. Um, so I stopped like... I stopped two years ago? When I, Around the time I became a streamer is around the time I stopped posting on DeviantArt. So this was the drawing that Solar Sands critiqued. Right? This was the one he put in his thumbnail. This was the one he critiqued. Also, I'm going back to this. I, I saw this art when I was talking to um my classmate. And I was like, that signature, I like it. I miss the signature. So, um, if you look at my new art piece, uh, yeah, the signature was combined. But he critiqued this one. These were the three I submitted. All very pale and pasty. And so this was the drawing I did afterwards. I, I, I did trace the, uh, as you can see, I did trace his outline. Um, I will admit that I traced a lot of the outlines. Not, I don't think exactly, exactly, but I, I like, I did change stuff. I know that, but I definitely traced like this part and the, some of the hair. Yeah, every time I struggled on something, I would just trace it. I didn't trace everything, I know that. But every time I struggled some on something. But as you can see, like, the coloring <laughs> is way different than the previous post. Um, if I go, like, yeah. As you can see, the coloring is way different because he told me. He's like, you need better shading, you need more coloring, like, your art is too pasty. And I took that to heart. And as you can see, I, like, kinda... I, this is... Definitely here is where I started incorporating the red in the ears and the neck. And a bit on the nose, but not too much. But yeah, this was my old deviant art. <laughs> um Yeah. It's it's something. It's a lot of BTS fan art. But yeah. Anyways, to the official art. Why- every time I look at this, it just gets more orange. And I need to know, guys. Does this color look... ...not too orangey? Okay. <laughs> that's the best I can ask. Looks natural? Okay, thank you. That's- that's basically what I want to know. Cool. I- I literally just searched up skin tones, because I wanted her to have dark- like, brown skin. I, I did want her... I didn't want to do lighter skin. Because I, I realized I tend to do lighter skin. And this one is definitely, like, a portrait that I wanted similar to my skin tone. Obviously, the skin tone is darker than me. Um, yeah, I've, I've gotten pale, guys. <laughs> That's because I stay inside. I don't go out. Um, I don't remember what I was doing. I was gonna start shading. But yeah, I just like 
you know, do the initial stuff. This is, I don't know how I feel about this orange. I do want orange, but I don't know if I want it this bright. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, I like... I'm pretty sure I have the cherry skin tone somewhere here. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely darker than me. <laughs> Honestly, I might change my skin tone again, though, because this... I think I tweaked it from my actual... My actual, um... Skin tone. Here. What is my... Because, like I said, I based it off my makeup, but I tweaked it and I made it lighter because it looked weird. Um, what is my... What is the makeup I use? What is the makeup I use? I'm trying to remember if I play. Is it... <laughs> uh, okay, well, <laughs> I meant it in, like, my care, my my art skin tone because the skin tone I use on myself in my art might not be accurate to who I am in real life to my skin tone in real life because I like I compare I compare my hand to to this and this looks a lot paler than me um IRL but it could also be lighting you know you know um, I'm trying to remember what makeup brand I use. Is it L'Oreal? Warm. I haven't had to buy makeup in a while. Yes, it is. It is. Haha, <laughs> it's the true match one. Um, it's like 23? 23? No. W6? Maybe I am this pale. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Man, am I, do I have a warped idea of how tan I am? This is like not... Why is this just not a good... Uh. Okay, these are my names. I don't know the name of my makeup. Do people actually like pay attention to the names of their makeup? Like... Does anybody like actually pay attention to their makeup name? <laughs> like, I used to shade Periwinkle, guys. You just wouldn't get it. Okay? <laughs> Wait, is this an accurate this? I'm getting way too distracted. But you know that's fine. I need to see if this I don't even know if this is the right one. Can I make myself darker? I don't know. It's fine, whatever. Uh what was I doing? Anyways. Yeah, that's true. I'm pretty sure some people do. I don't. I feel like I should. Um, I feel like that is an important thing to know when I go shopping for makeup. But that's a problem for me when I decide I need more makeup. Which I might need more eyeshadows because mine- I real I didn't know makeup expired. Um, and I've had those eyeshadows for like three years now. And I might need to throw them away. But it's like- why are they so big and so many? If they expire in a short amount of time, how am I supposed to use all of that in that amount of time, you know? It feels like a waste. It feels... I feel bad throwing it away. Um, and we're gonna keep... No, oh, what the... We're gonna keep drawing while I do this. While I talk. Because that's what you guys are here for. You guys are here for the art. Nobody's here for the for the random stories I have. It's for the art. Um, but yeah. So skin tone. What am I pressing S? Why am I pressing S? So I need to press X. <sighs> um. 
So, skin tones. I have three shades for the shading part and one for the... I didn't do a light highlight color. Um, we should probably do a highlight color. Because highlight is important. So I usually do... Again, I just blend the colors so that it matches decently. Do I understand color theory? No. Is that something I probably should know? Yes. As an art major, I should. Am I going to learn it? Probably not. Also, I don't even know how the lighting is going to be for this. I'm just going to wing it. Honestly. I'm a wing it. Um, so I go in with the lighter colors. Again, <laughs> I should know how this stuff works. But who cares? I know so many artists who actually don't know these things. And their art is really good. And they just do what they think makes sense. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> don't... Don't fully follow my example. Don't follow my example. But yeah. Well, that's, um, <laughs> but like I said, I was talking with my classmate. We started talking about, like, old art. And, like, they showed me their old art. And so I went on DeviantArt and showed them my old art. <laughs> um, and it's funny because, like, we were talking about old art and how a lot of people obviously go through similar stages and so a lot of art in early stages looks similar for a lot of artists and it just reminds me about like that whole like art lore on tiktok i don't know if you guys have seen um but on tiktok when some like some of it yeah i get why what is that in the corner Where'd my PNG go? Um... Hello? I'm still in a VC. Um... They're gone. The model is gone. Where did they go? Okay, we're gonna try. Okay, okay. I just had to exit and re-enter VC. There we go. <laughs> that was. I like looked over and I just saw block and I was like, what the? Hi, Kakashi. Is that you? I mean, if you want it to be you. <laughs> if you want. Up <laughs> to you. I don't know. <laughs> I'm. I just saw a picture on Pinterest and wanted to recreate it. Except it was a, a blonde white person. Um, yeah. <laughs> Obviously I didn't recreate it exactly. Um, I'm doing good. I am still cold. I am- I should have grabbed a blanket. The- the sweatshirt didn't. I, I gotta stop not doing anything while doing this. Oh, interesting. Pinterest has amazing references, and I love it. I just like going on Pinterest sometimes and scrolling, and being like, I'm gonna draw that. Saves, and then never draw it. <laughs> obviously, obviously that's a habit I gotta break. No, yeah. There was, um, one drawing I, I did on my, because... Um, I like stay. I did the wrong shade. I um, I stay on campus, so I get bored, and so I draw sometimes. And I'll go on Pinterest, and sometimes I'll watch videos while I draw. And one of them was about Legends of Zelda, specifically Twilight Princess. Wow, I just got hungry. Or maybe I'm cold. Are hunger and cold? Feeling of cold, similar. Can they- can they be mistaken? Is that a possibility? I 
Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Um, and yeah, I drew Zant. That's where I was going with that whole rant. Not really? Okay. <laughs> Intellectual? <laughs> what? I might- I- I did- I only made two pork chops. Uh... And they were with bone, so... They weren't as big as they looked. Um, but I have leftover mashed potatoes. I could warm up the mashed potatoes and put more cheese. We'll see. If I'm still hungry, I'll eat. Um... If not, then no. You guys- <laughs> So, it's been raining, like, all day on and off. I think it stopped right now. Yeah, it's not raining right now, right now. Um, but it's been raining all day and it was raining last night. It's amazing. I love the rain. It's been raining all day. We got a flood warning. What the? Oh, I thought that said acid, but it says it's accident cut off. You've been wanting rain for months? Well, <laughs> I live on the west, west coast. West Coast. <laughs> so we're getting rain and snow. Well, not snow where I'm at. Pretty close in the mountains nearby. Um, but not, not right here, right here. All your rain gets turned into snow? <gasps> Lucky. I went up to the mountains with my family the other day. Um, there was no snow. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, I'm from California. Okay? I'm from Southern California. <laughs> we don't get snow. I don't get to see snow that often. I see snow like every once every two years. And it's ice by the time I get to see it. Okay? Sorry if I think you're lucky. <laughs> I'm lucky, dude. It's it's hot most of the time. Like literally three days ago, I slept with my fan on because it was hot when I went to sleep. And then the next day, it's so cold in my bed. I'm shivering because my stupid AC. Give who a hamburger? What? What? <laughs> okay. Honestly. Honestly, sometimes I'm like, maybe I should not be a VTuber because I move my hands a lot. That's why I'm not drawing because I'm currently moving my hands, but you guys can't see. Give you a hamburger? Um, okay. How do I draw a hamburger? How does one draw a hamburger? Hamburger. 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 I just one draw a hamburger. What was I talking about? Um, yes. But I live in Southern California. We don't really... We don't really get rain that often. You know? I'm not... Do you like tomatoes? I don't like tomatoes. I'm not gonna add tomato. Hamburger. There you go. And then take a bite. <laughs> Sex kind of fun. You, it look, it kind of looks like the gummy hamburgers. You guys know those like gummy hamburgers. That's what it looks like. Um. Yeah, I I move my hands a lot when I talk, and that's I think that's why. <laughs> like I'm moving my hands right now. Um. But who, who knows, maybe we'll do a face cam stream one day. I'm currently wearing my glasses and I'm, my, I forgot to put liquid in my contacts, so they are all dried up and I have to make, make, I have to open new ones, which is fine because I recently got more and um, I like, did, wasn't fully out of my old ones, so I have like a lot of spare because I only wear my contacts when I go out and I'm a... I'm a Twitch streamer, so you guys know how often that <laughs> happens. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um. Oh yeah, it's it's fun. 
What's fun? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um. You look beautiful? You do look beautiful. I need my... I need the default skin tone. Bloop. Um, yep. Oh, I was gonna say, so because it was raining last night, I wanted to just snuggle up in my bed, but I wanted to watch something and I didn't want to watch something on my phone and somebody messaged me. What the? Whose Discord is that? Oh, it's Void. Not Voids. Why does it have- it's a... Uh, knife. Ooh! Knife changed their ca her character! Again! <laughs> Sorry. I, I had- I saw I had a notification. Like a direct message type thing? <laughs> or, uh... Yes. Oh! Yeah! My- my new vlog is out, guys. The new vlog is out. I will- I will, um, show you guys. New vlog. It's out. Um. Yes. The cherry logs. I know it's pretty late because, like, this month is almost over. Um. <laughs> but the January vlog is out. It's a little longer. They keep getting longer. Well, except, like, this one. Which is funny because I think. Wasn't this, like, combined? No. This one was the combined two months. This one was November. This was September, October. This one was November, December, and then January. And then February's is on is being worked on right now. <sighs> but yes. January's vlog is out. Over at the Cherry Logs channel. Um Yeah. <laughs> That either says Draw Waluigi or Draw Luigi, and I don't know which one. You mean? Um. But yeah. <sighs> Luigi. I don't know who that is. Who is that? Um. I zoned out. I can- Mario's brother- Luigi? The blue- the blue one? What the- the green one? I was gonna say the green one. Why did I say the blue one? Okay. Whatever. Share. Later. One day. Who knows. <laughs> um. Oh, I keep saying, last night it was super rainy and I wanted to watch something, so I ended up watching um, um, The Amazing World of Gumball, specifically the Puppets episode. You guys know why? You know why? Because uh, the creators of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared worked on that one, and it is my favorite Amazing World of Gumball episode because of that. Also, I'm like mainly focusing on the neck, despite honestly, it's probably not gonna be so shown much. And I should probably focus on the ear, but I want to focus on the ear fully all at once. Um, so I'm not gonna f do that yet. Um, but yeah. And then I started rewatching Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, season two, the one we watched. We finished it, right? We finished watching it. Pretty sure we did. Um, but yeah, it was it was fun. I liked Don. We finished it. Okay, I liked Don't Hug Me. I'm scared. It's honestly one of my favorite um, web series. Also, I you guys, I told you about my angel art that I did, my step, my sculpture thing, right? I'm pretty sure I did. It's on the thumbnail of my bot, so I'm pretty sure I did. Um, so I figured out, I finally figured out what the next art piece is going to be. Um, and I've already started working on it. It's, um, it's heavily inspired by, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to find it. Do you guys know the song Echo? Like the Vocaloid song, specifically. 
Do you guys know it? Um, if not, I'm pulling it up right now. Just so I could show you the art. Uh, that's you. No, you did not? Okay. So this one was like a song I listened to in middle school. Uh, yeah. So this is the... This is like the, the art that's used on the entire video. That's just gets like added has effects added to it. Um, but this is like the general art. So mine is my new art piece is heavily inspired by this. Um, it's like only the rib cage up basically, and there's not gonna be a TV head. It's just a regular well regular head. Um, uh, I could draw it out for you guys. <laughs> I know I'm getting distracted. I, but I will finish the art. It's just this is very exciting and I want to tell you guys about it. <laughs> um, so basically, and plus this is like, I've drawn this thing multiple times already. But so we got like a rib cage, right? That's not a rib cage. So we've got the rib cage. That's going to be layers of uh, wood. So this is layered, and each layer is a, like a half an inch of wood, and in between each layer is like a spine bone, basically. There's like a metal rod going through just for stability. Um, then there's going to be a piece of wood here with a... Uh, and this is the only way I could think of attaching the arms. Because basically there's six arms, um, and all of this is metal. And so the reason I'm doing this is because my professor was like, so this is our final, right? And the one of the dimensions, whether it be height, width, or depth, has to be the dimension of our wingspan. So my entire wingspan is about 64 inches. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's like my entire wingspan, like 64, 65. Um, so I decided to do like a rib cage, arms with hands, on the end of each one and then a head right here if we can move this a little more a head with flowers all around here um yeah and this is big like i already cut out the wood planks i have to cut each individual one and like perfect them but i've cut out like the basic forms um, this is metal. This is gonna be plaster. This is gonna be plaster. This is wood. The bone pieces are plaster. Um, I've already sculpted and molded the- made a mold. And I made a plaster piece, but I haven't checked on it, so yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so this is gonna be big, and the way the metal works is I'm welding it. So it's about half an inch to an inch. I think it's half an inch. Um, metal rods that I'm going to cut and weld together. So I have to cut a small piece here to be able to insert it to like the collarbone wood piece, weld this little piece to another one, and then weld all three arms <laughs> onto here, and then weld each arm Except this one. I think this one I'm just going to keep straight. Um, yes! I learned how to weld Thursday. <laughs> I welded two pieces of metal like this. Um, I learned how to weld yeah, Thursday. We had a welding demo. Um, yeah, it was really fun. Um, <laughs> so they told us, so we have to, you have, when you're welding, you have to wear a specific mask. Because when you weld the two metal pieces, it creates like a fusion, right? It's a fusion because it's a chemical reaction. Um, and it creates this thing that we call the arc. 
um, it's a bright light, like super bright. You have to wear a mask because too much exposure to it can damage your eyes. Um, so wearing a mask can will help like lessen that. And taking breaks is really important in between. So this is a lot. I'm gonna have to be taking a break um, between this because I'm gonna be welding a lot of pieces. Um, but so we learn like all of the safety. We learn what we are allowed to wear because these sparks as well that fly. Um, and you have to wear gloves. One of it was four of us that did the demo. The it was three girls and one guy. The guy forgot the gloves, and he he was he did it perfectly the first time. I but I think he said that it was he um he's welded before, so that, that's probably why he did it perfect the first time. I missed when I was so we like uh not metallic magnetized the pieces to a, a metal table because you have to have like the the gas. The machine clipped to um, a table, and then you have like the little blowtorch thing that has a little copper wire. And so when you press the button, it extends the copper wire because and it releases a gas. But if the gas is just touching the air, the copper wire just extends, um, and you have to cut it. You have to keep it like a centimeter out. Um, but the moment it gets close to metal, that's when the flame happens and that's when the fusion happens because it's clipped to the metal. So once it comes into contact with what it's clipped to, um, that's when the chemical reaction happens. Um, so I missed the first time because I couldn't see because I had go safety goggles on. While we were doing the cutting demo, we had to wear our safety goggles. And then they didn't tell me to take off. They didn't tell me I could take off my safety goggles when I put the helmet on. So the safety goggles, because I had my mask on, fogged up. And they were also super, super scratched up because they're old and people use them in the wood shop. Um, I also learned how to cut wood, cut and um, sand wood. Cause like the form, I, the forms I'm making are like basically like this. They're like hearts. Um, so I have to learn how to cut in a in a curved way um which took the first piece i might end up redoing because i ended up accidentally cutting it too straight so it's uneven in some parts um so i might remake it because you know it came out ugly and it's like the top piece but who knows who knows if i have time i'll remake it if not you know but um <laughs> but basically what happened um during one of one of the other girls, she was learning how to do it. She also missed a couple times, um, but she had accidentally gotten close while they were explaining to her some, how to like what she should fix. Um, and so all of us had our masks off, right? Um, for the demo masks, for people who are just watching, when you put it on, it's completely dark so that you don't see the light. You can like barely see the light, and it's like green when you have the mask on. It's like a a small there was like a small green dot right here that we could see and it was really quick right um so but in between so because we can't see we got to take our masks off in between and she would we have to yell welding so that people around us know to look away basically um but she had gotten too close and the button is super sensitive and so she moved her finger and pressed the button when none of us were wearing our masks. And so all of us got flash banged basically. Because it was she she held it for a little while. Um <laughs> I zoned out at that exact moment and looked away. So I wasn't looking at the metal. Everyone else was looking at the metal, but I wasn't. I had zoned out and was looking at the TA. Like, I was listening to him, but I also zoned out, so I wasn't fully paying attention. So I didn't get, like, flashbang too bad, because I wasn't directly looking. But apparently others did, and it was kind of funny. Um, it, it wasn't- it's safe- <laughs> Going against safety is not funny. <laughs> but <laughs> it also is kind of funny. Nobody was hurt. So, yeah. 
But yes. I don't know how much shading I'm gonna add to this. Because, like, a lot of it is kind of obstructed. But yeah, I learned how to weld. So I know how to weld. I know how to cut wood. Um, what else have I learned? I learned how to mold chicken wire. Um, for my angel, I made- I used chicken wire. Chicken wire. That's such a fun word to say. It's just so fun to say it like that. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think the neck and the arms are pretty decent. Um, I guess. I mean, it's a, it's a sculpture class. Um, so we learn how to sculpt stuff. We learn how to make molds with- we learn how to make silicone molds and molds with this like algae that are like um that's supposed to be a uh, like skin safe which but those those molds dry super fast like their one time use uh will dry in a day depending on size um so i have to use one of those to mold my hands because the hands for the character are my own hands um so each hand is gonna be different um so i have to mold my hand six times um but i have to because i have to weld the arms first together so i don't break the plaster and then i have to dry the plaster on the metal which means i have to weld first well first i have to cut the metal then i have to weld the metal then I have to make my plaster mold. Then I have to put the plaster in it. And then I have to put the metal piece in once it's like close to drying. Um, I don't want to put it when it's super liquidy because then it's just going to sink all the way in. Um, which might be helpful. But, you know, I don't want to like... Make it shorter than it's supposed to be. <laughs> um, but yeah. But it's a fun class. Honestly, we get to learn about like um we're reading a book <laughs> which is you might not think is a common thing in art class but it is it's very common to have to be forced to read for art <laughs> um yeah i i had to read every single art class i have had except my first paint my first art class which was the painting class we didn't have to read well, we did have presentations, but that was because we were on Zoom. Um, I realize I made this ear wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, you have to read a lot in art, surprisingly. Um, but it's mainly just reading about different uh, artists and different movements. Um, so, like, one of the main things we focused on was the minimalism movement with uh, Debuche, Berlinski, uh, what are their names? Ooh, what are their names? There's a, another art move. there's like an art group that came about after World War II? No, World War One. They came about after World War One. um, and they, they were like a group of artists who would do a lot of like presentations. They had a lot of conventions and stuff. Um, but yeah, <laughs> there's them. Um, but we were learning about that. And I'll give you guys, I'll tell you guys because <laughs> I saw a TikTok recently. Um, somebody was complaining about art. They're like, oh, how did we go from Renaissance art and baroque art to like these really realistic very detailed paintings and they also compared paintings like they did have a lot of um they had a they did have paintings for the modern art but they included paintings that are not just paintings they're also technically sculptures um because they're they're in they interact with the 3d space it's not just what's on the canvas it's also what's around them um which is not a fair comparison because obviously sculptural art is very different than paintings. Like, yes, there were a lot of sculptures back in like ancient Greek 
and like um like like around that time period that were very detailed um and but <laughs> i feel like they're compared they were complaining basically that they're like oh how did we turn from such detailed art to this and they're just showing a lot of paintings that are very minimalist basically um i'm gonna find that tiktok um and send it into the uh discord not right now i'm gonna send i might share it with you guys if you want if you want if not it's okay um but it made me upset because and honestly i'm not a huge fan of minimalist art i'll be honest uh, specifically modern fem minimalist art. I almost said feminist for some reason. I don't. I didn't mean feminist art. I meant minimalist art. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Oh, because I said fan. That's why. Honestly, fan. Um, I'm not a huge fan of current modern minimalist art due to the fact that I feel a lot of minimalist artists are missing. The original meaning of why minimalism happened. And I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm going on a rant, and I know I'm getting distracted, and this is gonna take a long time. I don't care, I'm not tired. This could be a long stream, who cares? I hope you guys don't mind me doing a long stream. Um, but... Okay, well, let me first search up this art. So I can explain to you. I'm gonna specifically talk about sculptures. Just <laughs> you're like listening to my rants. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that makes me feel better. Um, because that's what I'm mainly learning right now, and I don't remember too much about my, er my what I learned earlier. Um, but basically, so 20th century minimalist art, right? Um, uh, it's very minimal. <laughs> like that's the point, right? It's a lot of emphasis on shapes. It's a lot of emphasis on the lack of detail. But <laughs> there's a reason. Like, there, this is still technically minimalism. Even though it's not what you traditionally think as minimalistic, it technically is because it's shapes. <laughs> um, here, I need to get my notes. <laughs> I have notes on this. I literally take notes in class. I haven't the last two classes, but that's because I, I read the book instead. <laughs> but let me grab my notes. Okay, so, so, uh, every single note from every class I've taken is in here. So it might take a little because they're not all coherent. They're not all in the same like page after page. Um, see so this was Chicano history. Okay, so Duchamp. This guy, Duchamp, he decides to question what is art, right? His whole thing is asking what is art. And if you guys have maybe seen some of Sart, for example, this is called the fountain. <laughs> In actuality, it's a urinal turned to its side, signed, and that's it. <laughs> right? So this is like the start of what is called found art, where artists take already manufactured already ready-made things it's also considered ready-made um where they take all of this stuff right and they either combine it like he did with this one the bicycle wheel where he combined a bicycle wheel and a stool or they just sign their name and they just do this but the reason he did this is because he challenged he was challenging what art is um, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a push against what is art, especially because this is like 1917, around like World War One, around the time where everyone was confused on what was happening, 
and that's something a lot of people don't under realize. Art, especially 20th century art, the reason it's minimalist, the reason it's confusing, the reason why it's a bunch of shapes is because it's coming from a time where the two world wars happened. There's the Cold War. There's Vietnam. Nobody knows what's going on with the world. Nobody knows how to experience things. Nobody knows how to feel. And <laughs> that can be seen in some art. <laughs> like this. This is so like imagine you took all the frames of an animation and put them all in one layer. This is what this is. Um <laughs> sorry. And it's just like this. It's an art exhibit. The art piece is all of the string he put. And it doesn't make sense. It's not supposed to make sense, but it is at the same time. You know? <laughs> but yeah, um... It's... And this is... This is what my teacher said. Abstraction is both representational and its own form. Everything is abstract. <laughs> Um, and a lot of this art, a lot of minimalism art, ended up being not... So, when artists, when people think of art, they think about, like, having a, having a deeper meaning, right? And a lot of the time, that meaning is seen in the art. So a lot of the time, like, you can get the meaning by looking at the art. And being like, oh, this painting has a skull in it. So it represents death. However, with some of the minimalist art and a lot of the art that came from this movement, the it's not the art itself that shows the feelings and the meaning of what and the intentions of the artist. It's the way it was created. It was the artist isn't seen through the imagery, but through the actions, basically. <laughs> um yeah. And, uh, like, minimalism, it's a reflection as well. Sorry. I'm, like, looking at my notes. I'm, like... I'm, like, trying to look at my notes and explain to you guys all of this, and it's just... It's honestly, it's so fun. To, as much as I don't like minimalism, um, because... Especially found art. I'm not a huge fan of found art because a lot of it is manufactured um and it's like i it's cool it's it's like i don't like it but i understand it you can understand exactly why it became a thing um i'm trying to find my notes uh like i said a lot of my notes are combined oh data that's what it is that's what it is The Dada, Dada art movement was also, it was a rejection of capitalism. So they like, obviously it's a lot of found, it's also found art. <laughs> and it's just, it, it was also just a rejection. And it goes along it, with minimalism. Like they both kind of influence each other. But as you can see, a lot of it is just doesn't make sense. And that's also like a point. It's like that whole... This was, again, this came out from like rejection of capitalism as well as discussed from World War One. Um, yeah. Do you, I, do you guys want me to keep going? <laughs> I'm like remembering more and more points as I'm looking at my notes. Um, yeah, I could keep going. Like, I should keep going. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, Duchamp also had that like depersonalization of art. With oh, another thing with minimalism. Another thing with minimalist art is a lot of it plays with the idea of chance. Um, so take this first example. Um, this art piece, which, uh, did I write? Did 
this one we did look at, but I don't think I wrote down the artist. Um, I don't know who the artist is for this one. But a lot of this art is uh, something that goes with chance. Um, basically, yes, let me, I'm gonna open this image in a new tab. So we can get, okay, we can't get a better look. Basically, the reason it's a play with chance, the reason it's based on chance, is because if you were to stand, can you guys see my mouse? Yes, you can. If you were to stand here, the perception you get of this art piece by standing here is going to be completely different when you stand on the opposite side. Or let's say there's more people standing there. The art itself changes based on its environment. <laughs> so that's another thing with minimalism art. Um, did I write down the other? <laughs> there, I think it's like uh, the 100 box box art thing. Um, I don't remember. That's not what I was looking for. 100 boxes? Art installation? Yes, okay. <laughs> this one. This one. It's a hundred metal boxes, basically. Like, they're all made of aluminum, I believe? Donald Judd. That's what, I couldn't remember his name. Um, we'll search up Tim. Yeah, aluminum. See, they're aluminum boxes. So... It's a hundred of these. And you might think, that's stupid. <laughs> like, they look like they could just... They look like they're factory made, which they are. But it's... You might think, I could do that. Anybody could do that. But the reason... The reason is kind of cool. Is because... Every second that passes, the art changes. If you were to go see this art piece at... Um, let's say you go in June at in the afternoon. The way you see that art piece is going to be completely different if you go again in February at night. Because the shape, the color is going to be different. The environment is going to be different. And that's why it's, that's why it was, um, it's a, it's cool, basically. Because a lot of these art pieces that are a lot of just shapes, the reason they were made it's not because of the art itself the reason they're not just cool is because uh, trying to get my words the reason they work isn't because of the art itself but because of the environment and that's what a lot of artists did around this time it was a play with environment because they played with time because context because environment, who you are as a person, plays into the art piece. And thus, it kind of ends up taking out the artist, and also brings the artist, because <laughs> you become the person who gives it meaning. And it's like, whatever the artist intended, doesn't matter. Or it's not important, or it's not noticeable, because you are giving it new meaning now. And, yeah, that's really cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, these are just, these are all at the same, um, museum. At the Chinati Foundation. Um, they're all by the same artist, Donald Judd. But it's a lot of just, like... It's shapes. They're boxes. But, like, look. Is this art piece? Is this the same as this? No. <laughs> These two aren't the same. It's like, you can take it from different angles at different times of the day and you're seeing a completely different art piece. And that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I saw that... I saw that TikTok and I was like, you don't get it, you don't, and that, it also happened around the time, um, with that whole, with AI art, 
everyone's like, oh, people are gonna are calling this art. It was the piece of. Uh, I'm gonna search it up. Uh, they showed. They specifically showed. Um, it wasn't this. It was a yellow painting. Um. But they specifically showed a certain painting. They're like, oh, why is this considered art? If, um, if AI art isn't. And the reason it's considered art, the reason it's so cool and artists love it, is because you can't see the breath, brush strokes. Like, the art was created with the intent. It, the, the artist put so much time into this art piece, you can't see the brush strokes. Uh,. Yellow painting. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to find it. I just I just don't remember the artist or the title of the actual art. Um. But okay. I'll just show you guys this. So, obviously, like, oh, wait, is it this one? No, it's not this one. Maybe it's not. I don't think it's this one. Maybe it's this one. I don't know. But, uh, as you can, like, as you can see, you can see, like, the brush strokes. Like, no matter how many art pieces you look at, all of them show the brush strokes. Right? Some more obvious than others. But, maybe it was this one. This one's older. But, there was one artist who, a lot of his art, or specifically that one, was you couldn't see the brush strokes. And that's what made it awesome. That's what made it beautiful. It was the fact that he put so much detail into this art piece that you couldn't see his work, his, his, in, like print on it basically you couldn't see the artist's print and that's why it was amazing that's why it's considered a great art piece because you couldn't see the artist and that was what made it like you, you guys understand what i'm talking about you guys understand what i mean <laughs> um but yeah and there was the, that made me upset because i was like you don't you don't understand it <laughs> it's it's like, people see minimalist art, they see modern art, not all of it is meaningless, but they see a lot of it and they just see it for what it is. They don't take the time to, under to question why it is. They don't take the time to question why the artist decided to do that. And then sometimes, sometimes there is art where it's like, don't do that. But art can, it's kind of complicated. Because some art, it's like, you don't have to question everything about it. Some art, you could just look at it and be like, no, yeah, that's a painting of a person. Or that's just a sculpture in the shape of a feather. Um, while other art, it's like, no, it's not just this. <laughs> it's not just for blocks all put together it's a completely different idea it's a push against capitalism it's oh who's the italian artist there's an italian art movement as well where they also did that whole uh found oh art poor poor pure it's italian i can't read that um art of poor basically so these artists, what they did was they took everything that they had around them. They took stuff that they found. They took random things that they could find on the street and they made it into art. Um, who was it? Who was it? Who was it? There's one guy. He took, or they took, um, dirt basically, put them in bags and stacked them. And they made an installation of that. Um, uh, I'm looking at my notes. I swear I wrote it down. 
Um. Yeah, so like, the use of everyday material, attack of government, institution, and culture. Um. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna search these artists up and see which one. Pierre. Wow, my handwriting sucks. I'm gonna assume Piranha. Piranha? No. Is that an A? Oh, I'm combining two names. Sounds more French. Yeah, it's because I combined two different names. I combined Pierre Hugh and Philip Pro. <laughs> um, I don't think all of them were fully Italian. I know most of them were Italian. It was an Italian movement. I know that. Um, I combined. Uh, see. My brain sees two lines together and it completely combines them. Um, so. <laughs> That's why he didn't show up the first time. Was it this guy? No, it wasn't this guy. But he he did do this. It was I think it was an old skating rink. And he basically all of this was he designed this. Um, oh, this is the guy who, this is an actual dog, and in the installation, the dog would just walk around. Like, the, the dog would just walk around the museum. Um, this was actual bees. Um, in one of the museums that it was displayed in, it was outside, and you could just see the bees buzzing around. Um, this was, right? No, not this one. He had something similar, though, in this here. This was an old um, skating rink. Um, and so every seven years, um, one artist gets chosen to do something like this. I don't remember exactly why, but every seven years it happens, and this guy, he got to do it this year, that year. Um, and so basically all of this was dug up, and there's like these tanks filled with a bunch of cells and a bunch of like some of the some of them have like different um what's it called like or living organisms basically and then on the on the ceiling these open up to shine light on different parts um and basically you like walk around like see there's this guy and there's some people you would basically just walk around um but it wasn't this guy it wasn't this guy. Hmm. We'll start at the beginning. I didn't like... I just chose a random name for my notes. Mario... Mars. Oh, it was him! Ha! Huh! I should have gone to the first guy. See, this... This is just a bunch of, uh... Dirt. Or cement, I can't remember in bags and stacked all about and I don't know what it says here but yeah it it him and other artists in this time just took a bunch of uh for the art of poor they just took a bunch of stuff that they found around and they made it into art like this is just a bunch of sticks but it works <laughs> it's and then it's supposed to it's like uh it's just like a rejection of capitalism, of government, of like institutions, you know? It's a push against, it's to show like, this is the what we live in. This is what we see every day. We're surrounded by all of these things. Look, basically. But yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm becoming less confident in what I'm saying, so... I should probably go back to. Wait, I want to search up this because all I wrote was this person's name and use of time. <laughs> I'm really bad at taking notes. Oh, 
Yeah! This is just a block of ice, and what he did was he pushed it around until it was gone. That was the whole art piece. The whole art piece was just him pushing this block of ice everywhere. And, yeah. A lot of art... A lot of sculptural art can be, like... What's it called? Um... Performative. That's another thing. Some art can be performative. Um... This one guy... Called, uh... Said that... Sculptural art... Is theatrical. Um, so, the, in the book we're reading, uh, I think the author is called, is, their name is Kraus? Kraus? Um, but they were talking about how there's this one guy who made an essay, for, for, Freed, wow, I can't speak, Freed, um, and he called Duchamp and other artists, uh, they, he called their works theatrical. But the reason he didn't like these abstract minimalist works is because they're too theatrical. And um, the author was saying that that he, they don't know what they what Freed me meant by theatrical because it's such a vague term. Um, so they assumed that Freed meant kinetic and with light because a lot of art like played had that playing with light and movement and stuff, but it's too broad of a term to, like, fully understand what they're, what he was criticizing. Um, I just thought that was funny because all I wrote was, Freed's use of the word is too confusing. <laughs> That's all I, like, this, these lecture notes are only four lines. The first line, theatricality, kinetic, and light. Um, the next point is like a sub point of that. Too broad of a term, but specific. <laughs> next line, Freed's user of the word is too confusing. And then the last line is replication of life. How did I get there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where. <laughs> Great and useful notes. Thank you. I know. I honestly don't know how I got there. Um, yeah. It's just, I have a really bad habit that I started in... I don't know when I started it. But I have a bad habit of wanting all my notes to only... Like, every line that a, my professor says, or a teacher says, every point they make has to fit in one line. Um, so I could use as little pages as possible. Uh, so, I don't really have very uh, my my work is a lot of like not interesting um i'm trying to look at the most random notes i took sculpt oh this is in quotes sculpture is an art of palpitation do i know what that means i wrote underneath symbolism may not be the focus formal aspect colon time and space um, ambiguity of space. Fluxus. Diverse in people and mediums. Oh yeah, there is also Alan Capro's happening. Where like, each, like, all the audience gets, um, gets to make their art. They get instructions on how to make art. Yeah. Surrealist. That that's one note is just surrealist. <laughs> um, there was there is no additional add in add-ins onto that. I just wrote surrealist. Um, I don't even think I was talking about the shop. I just think I wrote that. <laughs> My professor always said something about surrealism, and I was like, "Yep." I'm gonna look at. Oh, now I'm looking at my notes. Like, I have my Chicano history notes here, too. Um... Just he talks. He rants. He does what I do. My my professor from my Chicano history class does what I do. Gets distracted and rants about stuff. 
um, for like 30 minutes. The class is from, it's like only, it's an hour 20. Yeah, the class is an hour 20. It doesn't feel like it, honestly. But I feel like it's because he rants a lot. Um. I wrote era wrong. I spelled it A-R-A. -A. I'm like looking at this. I wrote 1880s to 1920. Quotations. Golden era. <laughs> of immigration. When I meant era. <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember writing these notes. Sometimes I zone out and I just write stuff. So I honestly don't remember a lot of this. Yeah, I... I don't remember this. Oh, huh, this is interesting. I'm just looking at my notes now, guys. I'm sorry. You guys can't see them. But I even wrote when we watched a video. Oh, because I was taking notes for somebody. Somebody was at one of my classmates is absent. I was taking notes for them, and I would insert um, what video we were watching. Dude, we watched. So you guys know Jacqueline Kennedy, the first lady. Um, what's her name? Uh, JFK's wife. So at the time when JFK was running for presidency. He wanted the uh, Chicano vote, basically. He wanted the appeal of the Hispanic and Latino community. So Jacqueline Kennedy made a campaign um, video in Spanish. Like, she spoke Spanish asking for uh, voters to side with um, JFK and, like, talking about all the things they would do for immigration and for, like, Chicano uh, citizens. And it was just interesting to watch. Because her Spanish isn't that good. Um, and she just stares into the camera. She's not... Like, she... <laughs> she's not that... I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> but her emotions... Aren't... She's not that enthusiastic, is what I'll say. <laughs> um, and occasionally, she'll, like, do a gesture. But, like, she'll have to do it. As if it was, like... A second thought or she was told to do it. It was it was it was interesting to watch. Um obviously I like understood what she was saying. Um but it was just interesting. What other videos did we watch that were kinda interesting? We also watched like uh people being racist. You know racist white people yelling at kids for being kids. We watched a lot of that. <laughs> Or people speaking Spanish and getting yelled at. There was also videos we watched. Yeah. It was interesting. I didn't know that there was like a Chicano, um... Uh... Party. Like, political party? Called, called La, Raz La Raza Unida. I didn't know that. But they wanted to be like a third political party to run. Um, and they focused on like Chicano and, um... It was obviously mostly Chicano, but they also, like, worked- I think they also worked with other, uh, POC organizations. Yeah, um, we should probably go back to art. <laughs> you know? The- the thing I was supposed to be doing? Uh, <laughs> the thing I say in the title I'm gonna be doing? But you know what? It's fine. I get distracted, it's a thing. I- what the? I'm forgetting the buttons. But let's be honest, you guys are probably used to me getting distracted all the time. It's nothing new. <laughs> Honestly, but it's- it, I like sharing all this information with you guys, because I can't really talk about it with my friends. Because they don't understand, or they're just not interested. Or not, and like talking about it with my parents. It's like they add in their interventions, and then I feel like I'm stupid <laughs> because it because they add more stuff, or they like correct what I say, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> you're interested, yay! <laughs> uh, I'm just like, oh, okay, well, you know, 
You know, fine. I feel like I made this ear tiny. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna, just gonna, just gonna, just gonna, we're just gonna, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yep. But it's fun. I like, I just like ranting to you guys about stuff because I can and you guys listen. You guys are just forced to sit here and listen. Um, I hold you hostage. And you guys listen. And I appreciate- <laughs> I appreciate you for that. Yeah. It's just- it's always fun to rant about stuff. Um, because I can. And I like- I honestly do like- I mention this all the time. I love learning history, I love learning stuff, and especially when the teachers actually make it fun. Um, because history is really important, and it's actually really fun to learn. You just have to have the right person to teach you. Um, and it sucks that not a lot of people get that. Um, it sucks that not a lot of people get to experience history the way I do. And I think I got that love from my mom. Um, she she loves history as well. Um, which she got that love from her brother who he he literally majored. He's a I think he he's a, he's a history he's a history professor too. Um but yeah. I was, you got it from your dad? Nice. Yeah, history is is just so fun to learn. Um and it's very important too. Like people say, learning history is important so that you don't repeat it. Um, and learning patterns, because humans are creatures of pattern. It, and so learning those patterns and understanding what they can lead to is very important. And that's why we learn history and it sucks that people don't, aren't able to learn history in a way that they actually are able to understand it and um, actually learn from it, you know? But yeah, learn history, guys. And I hope you guys get teachers that teach your, your teach you history in a good way, in a way that sticks. Yeah, history's fun. It's also interesting to be like, to make fun of history people. Not history people, like historical figures. <laughs> It's also just kind of fun to make fun of them. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, you were so stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. Um, especially colonizers. That's fun to make fun of them. Especially like once you move past the Eurocentric schooling system. And you actually learn about how horrible and kind of gross people they were. Like, and also the reason, okay, <laughs> this is a fun thing I learned in my, um, in my Latin America, uh, art and architecture in Latin America class, and also in just like my history class as well. Um, I dropped my pencil. Um, so my history class, I think we learned, it was history from, 1500s to 1900s or 1800s something like that right um and so a lot of it was a focus on colonialism um <laughs> and one of the things that uh my professor kept emphasizing was the fact that a lot of european colonizers a lot of the things they ended up uh writing because we read a book from one of the Spanish colonizers um, and he was like writing and like we would read a chapter she would go over it and then she'd be like so this is where he lied um, this is actually what happened this was incorrect uh, because uh, this guy was writing all of this for the king and so he like changed a lot of what he was saying um, to make them in a better, put them in a better light. And so she would like, we would read a chapter and then we would discuss it. 
And <laughs> she'd be like, so actually, this is why it happened. This is what they were actually doing. Um, this was actually way worse than he, he writes it. Um, it was kind of funny. Because <laughs> she'd be like, um, actually. But uh, one of the things uh, that people talk about, or that she mentioned, was how a lot of Spanish, they were like, oh, the, the, uh, the natives here worship us because they like light candles and put incense, burn incense. And um, it's because they... They, they smelled bad. <laughs> um, they, the natives put incense around them because the, the colonizers didn't shower. They showered like once a year. Uh, while showering was a practice that natives... It was something that the natives did a lot. And the, they, they had soap and everything. Um, and, and the colonizers did not. <laughs> Um, so they smelled really bad. <laughs> so bad that the natives <laughs> would burn incense to get rid of the smell. <laughs> it's kind of funny to think about. Like, I just think about that and I'm like, damn. <laughs> like, they got that idea that they were being worshipped, but in actuality, they were being called out for being stinky. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Like, I just... I always think about that when, um, because there was, I think, someone on TikTok one time, they're like defending colonizers, or they're like, oh, my ancestors were doing all of this, this, and this. They're being racist, basically. And I was like, <laughs> no, they weren't. They didn't have soap. Hey, <laughs> your ancestors smelled so bad <laughs> that the native people had to do something about it. Also, I'm gonna drink water. Well, I'm not drinking water, I'm drinking Arizona. <laughs> so you guys should drink something. It's hopefully water, but stay hydrated, guys. But yeah. I don't know, it's funny. <laughs> Which flavor? Um, the green tea. Green tea with, uh... Is it ginseng? And honey. Yeah, that one's my favorite. I like the green tea one. It's not too sweet. Um, so I, I can drink it. <sighs> yeah, sorry. I was just laughing. Laughing plus the shaking from being cold made me feel funny. Um, yeah, I love Arizona. One day I hope to be sponsored. One day. <laughs> Ooh, I got cold again. Um, I don't know if I want to keep drawing. You have an obsession with Arizona? Me too. It's honestly really bad for me. I honestly shouldn't be drinking this much Arizona, but I do. It's just so good. <laughs> it's just so good. I love Arizona. Um... Yeah, the only what's funny, <laughs> yes, twinsies. What's funny is the reason I started drinking Arizona was because I thought it looked pretty. I was like, this looks pretty. I'm gonna start drinking it. Um, which is funny because it's the same reason I don't drink um Monster. I I'm just like Monster doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. Also, my friend. Um, she was like, I can't drink Monster because every time I- Or not just my friend. A lot of people are like, if I drink- Once I drink Monster, I feel like I'm gonna go into a panic attack. Which I- <laughs> I obviously- I have- I'm prone to panic attacks. Um, so I'm like, oh, I don't- I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to feel like I'm having a panic attack every single time. I, um... I drink Monster. Um, but yeah. But, so I drink Arizona tea instead. And it doesn't make me feel like I'm about to die. And I love it. <laughs> Look at my art so far, guys. <laughs> I just need to... just need to do the lips, I think. Maybe add a little more detail to the nose. Oh, the eyebrows, too. The barely shown eyebrows. I don't know why. I just really... This is like something I do a lot in my art. 
Um, I don't know why, I just really enjoy flowers and veins on people, specifically face and neck. Like, I think I've- this is like the third or fourth drawing I've done with somebody- FIFTH! This is the fifth drawing I've done with somebody with flowers coming out of or on their face. Um, and then one of my main characters for my video game has a- basically it's like this design on his- it's a tattoo on his neck that goes all around- like it- the lines wrap around his neck and it's just all here. <laughs> yeah. Actually, <laughs> now that I'm looking at this art piece, it's kind of similar to his color scheme. Um, but yeah. I, I don't know why, I just that's that's something I like to do as an artist. I mean obviously I did that with the J-Hope one. I'm shaking so much. Um <laughs> I think it's cause is the door open? It doesn't look like this. I'm next to the patio door, so maybe that's why I'm so cold. But yeah. Look at this art guys. <laughs> Sometimes I just look at my own and I'm like, wow. I've improved so much. Um, I even posted, I think, on Twitter, I made a post where it was, like, 20, 2016 versus, um, 2023 side view. Um, let's see. I was like, why are people- <laughs> I got a bunch of- I got 12 likes on a, a tweet, and I was like, why are people liking this? Because I responded to Nephris. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I saw a tweet that Void posted. They're like, oh, would they fight that neutral? And I, I was like, I, I wanted to see if they would fight me. Um, and they're like, it depends. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, this side profile. I made this 2016. Here, let's, let's, let's expand. You guys can see. I'm, I'm kind of already done with this drawing. Well, I'm not done with it. I'm more done with drawing for the moment. I can't, I can't focus on one thing for a long time. Um, anyways, so this is a digital piece I did 2016. Look at that amazing background, guys. Look at how well blended and <laughs> how everything goes in the same direction. <laughs> And the color scheme. Look how amazing those art pieces. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, what? This is such a big eye. Wait. <laughs> okay. I just want to see exact. I want to get an understanding of what I drew here. Um, let's get an understanding of what this drawing is. Um, because I need to. I need to see exactly what was going through my middle school head All right this was middle school yeah i'm pretty sure i still have this drawing because I, I drew it on on paper and then i just copied it digitally i like took a picture and i exported it this <laughs> i should redraw this one I might redraw it. I'm assuming this is where the eye is. Which, judging by me, I this is probably the eye. <laughs> Wait, okay. So we're gonna, like, try to map out the facial features. And, like, just ev where everything's at. So we could get an understanding of who this character is. These are such tiny teeth. And a big chin. Oh wait, these are the ears, so then this is... This is like the, the jaw. <laughs> oh my god. Middle school me. Now this is when I, my line art, I did this for line art. The chicken scratch line art because I thought it gave it detail. Chicken scratch line art because I was like, it gives it personality. So I'm, I'm just gonna like assume where this, the different features are. But judging by the, I don't, 
I don't even know. So this is the character. <laughs> oh my god. I can make fun of it because it was middle school me. And I've improved. So this was this looks like about what the character is supposed to look like. And now we pull up J Hope. And this is now how I draw side profiles. I'm not even that I still like this I took so long I only was able to do his side profile because I copied it like using the box method thing that I showed in um with the other J-Hope drawing. And the same with this, I did the box thing. But I don't know if I can but I had references for those. So I don't know I, I suck at side profiles if I don't have a reference. But should we try? Should we at least do somewhat of a decent, uh, uh, <laughs> somewhat decent? Yeah, like the grid method, that thing. Basically. I forgot the word, thank you. Grid method. I used the grid method that I learned. <sighs> um, what was I gonna do? What am I doing with my life? It does. It honestly does. Some people say it's cheating. I say it's usefulness. Okay, so. Um, this mega mind person. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what we need to fix first. Um, the nose. The nose isn't too, too bad, you know? I mean, it's not that bad. I learned to just do a triangle for noses, and then circles. I know, oh my goodness, art cheats. Oh my goodness. I also suck at lips. As you can tell, I like, I struggled so much on his lips. I kept changing them, and even now they don't look, they look kind of tiny. He has tiny lips. Now that I'm looking at it, I think I made his lips too tiny. I feel like I made his lips and eyes too tiny. Now that I look at it. I don't know. Who knows? But already. Already. A different side profile. That and that. Um, okay, so now that I got like the basic idea, I should look at a side profile reference, shouldn't I? I- it always amazes me when I see artists who can like, just go straight into art without doing a sketch. Like, they can do their art without doing a sketch. Anyways, we're gonna start all over. By going to Pinterest and looking up side views. Or just searching up side view of face. I don't even remember. How do I normally do side views with my sketch? I do like a square. And then I do a circle. Actually, no. I do a circle and then I do a square. I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna do this. Because I... This is what I do. And then we go straight down. And then we go like this. And then like this. So now we got a jaw. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, guys. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> getting tired? <laughs> this is how you know I'm getting tired because I stopped making sense and I just start doing whatever I feel like and that ends up being like not good because I end up just saying whatever I want and making random noises. Yeah. Um.
here goes here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want to know something that uh, I've specifically been doing um, lately? <laughs> I've been trying to do... Because <laughs> uh, a, a long... Like, this is another thing that I saw from TikTok. A long... A couple months ago, somebody was talking about how whenever they're feeling down, they go into the Hatsune Miku voice. And somebody else, they're like, yeah, I'll oh, sometimes do the Ariana Grande. Yeah. No, how does it... Yeah. No, how does she do it? Why can't I remember it? I, st I, st I started doing that. <sighs> can't do it right now. But I started doing the yeah that she does the... <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I can't remember for some reason. I used to do- I started doing it for a while. And somebody else would- It's like, I'll make a random noise. Just for the sake of doing it. I, I started doing Foolish's Rata Rata. Like one time I was laying in bed. And I like- I don't know what I did. But I just like, Rata Rata. <laughs> I just started doing it for some reason. Ow, I just- Stabbed myself with my nail. But yeah, I it's just fun to make noises for the sake of making noises, you know? Already, look at the difference between this side profile and this side profile. <laughs> the eye. The eye is just so hilarious to me. <laughs> Oh my god. Ugh. I gotta stop laughing at myself. I still can't do side profile bodies though. I think it's like... It's like an S, basically. Yeah, I still can't. I still struggle a bit. Um, I also... Yeah, I just struggle. I also don't know how to do arms. That's still a thing I can't do. Side profile arms. But that's just because I haven't practiced a lot of this. Um, I will admit, I just I just haven't practiced. Um, and so that's why I'm not that good at certain things. Um, but that's why I'm doing art again, because I need to practice, because that's literally my major. Okay, so we, we, I wanted like a fin, like, uh, ear. I think instead of doing the gills here, I'm gonna do it on the neck. That's where people normally put gills for humanoid fish people. On the neck, which I guess makes sense. Um... Uh, they still add noses, and I'm still going to add a nose because she does have a nose. She does have a, like, a pretty sharp nose. We'll keep the sharp nose, I suppose. No. Not that sharp. Oh, why is my... Okay. I don't know why it was soft. Not like... Okay. We'll fix that. Nope, that's also not in the correct... I guess is what I meant to do. I don't know what I meant to do. I s we are learning new things today, guys. We are learning that I don't really know how to do stuff without a reference. <laughs> um. Yeah. What's the that? That. How does that look? Okay, that looks a little better. I mean, compared to that. I mean, anything compared to that looks a little better. I feel like I've lost my voice. I don't know how to do someone smiling. Like, with their mouth open. Did I just do this? 
Have you guys seen that anime Kamisama Kiss? That's another. I. Some, that's another thing I did. There's, so there's an anime called Kamisama Kiss. It's like a romance. It's like a rom com, I guess. Anime. Um, and so it's this girl. She's a high school girl, who's homeless. Um, and so the Earth God gives her his house by making her the Earth God, basically, right? Um, and so she's like learning how to become the new Earth God. And so one of her duties is like make granting people's wishes. And so the fish um, god, one of the water gods, one of the water spirits wants to become human um, because she fell in love with a human and so she wants to be able to meet them in a in a human form, right? Um, but she has this habit where she bites her teeth and that was something I did for the longest time. I would just like bite down on my teeth out of nowhere because I copied her. I don't know why I decided to copy her, but I did that. <laughs> That's what the smile reminded me of. <laughs> Just that. <laughs> I don't know how to do a smile. I don't know how to do somebody with their open mouth smile. So we're just not going to. Or maybe I could look at a reference. Are any of you people smiling in your side profile? Mm, she's kind of grimacing. But yeah. That was one thing I, I would copy. And I would just do that. Out of random. And now it, now it just feels unnatural to do. It just feels weird doing it. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> this guy is sure is smiley. Okay. We'll try to do a smile. Um, so for teeth? I normally do, like, the full teeth and then erase. So we're gonna do the full teeth under here. Um, yeah. I started rewatching that anime. It's a good anime. I like it. Um, I recommend it. Uh, that's funny. And the characters are cool. Do I understand how teeth work? Not really. Which is funny because I literally, one of my characters, I drew my art character. I drew a character. Um, what's it called? What was I saying? I drew a character with like half their mouth missing and exposed their teeth. Um, it looks like for the smiles, their top teeth are the only thing that show. So we don't need bottom teeth. We can just have top teeth. And it's okay if they don't show very sharp. See how that looks. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. That isn't. That's not too bad. You know? Smile, I. Smile. That doesn't look too bad. I'm trying to convince myself. Sometimes if I gaslight myself enough, it works. Sorry, I wanted to see like how I how far his eye was from his nose. 
I can get an understanding. I don't know how I should do her eye. I, <laughs> I just have my arm to the side. Okay. Man, it doesn't look too bad. What do you guys think so far? I mean, definitely the features are a lot different. I feel like it's not too, um, too badly done. Uh... I'm looking at the references. <laughs> I I needed to look at like references for a side profile. Um because I could not do this blindly, fully. Because I have very little experience with doing side profiles. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Hello. Sorry. I got a notification and I tend to say hello. What? What? Sorry. Um, okay. What do you guys think so far? Should we give them eyebrows? Do underwater creatures need eyebrows? You could give them a brow bone, I suppose. I don't know how low it would be. Now they look worried. That just makes them look worried. Um, I think it has to be lower. I think brow bones are like... Like here, aren't they? I don't know. Some people, I think it depends. It just looks like they're worried. But maybe once we shade everything, it'll look better? Perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps. We'll see. We'll see. Um... I also don't know, like... How... I don't know if I'm gonna give them clothes. Or if I'm just gonna hide everything with the long hair. You know? So this seems to be about correct with the arm. Okay, that does not seem to be correct with the arm. Something is off. Uh, do any of you have your arm? You have your arm, but you're at a lower angle. You do not have an arm. In the frame, is what I mean. Oh, I didn't even look at this one part I wanted to look at. Okay, so it's kind of like... Like this. There you are. Because it kind of goes like this. So it kind of looks like this. Yes. <laughs> wow! It's only been two hours? Really? I feel like I've been streaming longer. <laughs> I feel like the stream has gone way too long. <laughs> we did- I feel like we did a lot. <laughs> this stream. And so little at the same time. I mean, look. Okay. Uh, that arm is kind of wonky. It's kind of funny. It- 
feels like their body isn't as big as it should be. Oh, I got cold. I did talk a lot, that is true. I did talk a lot. Maybe that's why. <laughs> See, that seems to be the main reason why things don't get done on the on streams on this channel because I talk and I talk and I talk a lot I do tend to talk a lot um okay so how should I do hair this is what we got Oh yeah, they're fish tattoo. You know, I kind of do like the simple shape that it is. <laughs> I I I genuinely That is such an adorable little tattoo. Tattoo? Okay, well this is this part was a little bigger. I like it. I'm keeping it. We're gonna make this part a little bigger. This part a tiny bit smaller. So that it looks like a body. Look at it! It's just there. Actually, you guys wanna know something? I did kinda recreate this at one point. Um, it's also on my TV, it's art. <laughs> Um, yeah, TV and I is the only place you can find my old art, uh, because I privated my old Instagram. Let's see, I used to do a lot of before versus nows, aka recreation art. Um, This was the first version of that recreation, which wasn't, it went a little better. This is around the time um, where I didn't want to do line art. As you can tell, this is like, around this time, there are two things that was a main like feature, feature, main thing, yeah, feature of my art. And that was very, like, sectioned hair. So each hair, you could see where the strand goes. Like, you could see which strand is what. Um, because I was watching a tutorial on how to do hair, and they did this. I'm pretty sure they... I, didn't, I don't think I watched the full tutorial, to be honest. I saw them do this, and then I ran with it. And I'm pretty sure they only did this to, like, you know get an understanding of how the hair flows and then they just like follow that and like you know delete most of it but I did not do that I kept it sectioned like that that was a main feature of my art and then there was the lack of line art um I still do this don't I <laughs> the whole kind of slanted I think because I curve downwards, I go like that. I think that's why my art, why the eyes went like that. Did I? I think I did that here. Okay, that's cool. Not it's not as drastic as over here, I guess, where it's like fully. Also, the very thin eyebrows. I, at least I, they're kind of high too. Like look at that distance. <laughs> this is some high eyebrows. Um, and the nose I also did pretty. I think this, I purposely made the nose like this. I think I did this on purpose. I'm not too sure though. I also did a lot of cell shading. I still kept the gills here. Which is an interesting thing I did. Um, and then, yeah, that was my digital art during this time was pretty interesting. Um, as you can see, like, the shading was meant to replicate the line art that would normally be there. Okay, 
Here, I'm gonna real quickly. Oop, that's not what I meant to do. I need to move this. Expand this. And then we're just gonna move this guy over this way. So we can compare the three. Um, we're also gonna move this that way. This takes a while. If I zoom out, it feels like it goes faster. Does it actually? I don't know. But it feels like it does. So, yeah. So these are the three versions. <laughs> um, the first version, the second version, and then the new one. <laughs> Thoughts. Obviously, there's improvement. You can see improvement. Um, they, it bothers me that they look so concerned here. That's not the line art. That's not the art. There. It just bothered me how concerned they look. Also, I might change with the ear. The ear is kind of bothering me. I don't think I placed the ear correctly. should be a little lower. That looks a little better. You know where I caught the ear from? Like, you know where that idea for the ear came from? I used to draw Pokemon as humans, and I drew Vaporeon, and that's where I got the ear from. Actually, I at one point found the original two Espeon and Umbreon drawings that I did. They're both pretty similar. Yeah. This is something I was gonna mention earlier about that whole art lore thing on TikTok. A lot of it is like, yeah, that that makes sense why you guys are making fun of that person. Um, because I don't condone making fun of people, but I understand why <laughs> What they did is kind of like, did you, did you listen to yourself when you type? Did you like say this out loud and pay, actually listen to what you were typing? Um, and then others, it's like, no, this this is clearly like a kid starting out. Like, this is clearly like, don't lie to yourself. You had art like that <laughs> when you first started. Like, who are you- who are you kidding? Look, I mean... I'm- I may- uh... I'm... Yeah, I draw like this now, but look at my art from middle school when I was first starting out. Look how big the eye is. The placement of everything, like... A lot of the time, when people make fun of artists on TikTok, it's like... They're just starting out. Go so slack. <laughs> um, it's not art lore. It's just someone learning. Not everyone starts off very perfect. I mean, I thought this was the best I had done, and now look, like these are very clearly. They don't look like they were made by the same person, but all three of them were at different time periods of my life. And it's just, it's pretty interesting. And I hope that the people that did get made fun of don't give up art. Yeah. Just because your art looks bad doesn't mean you should give up. Trust me, every artist has bad art. No matter how much we try to hide it. <laughs> There's always going to be cringy art. <laughs> and it's cringy. And later on, you're gonna make fun of it. But that's okay. <laughs> because you had fun making it at the time. You like it at the time. So it doesn't matter how cringy and how stupid you may think it looks in the future. But yeah. I'm gonna save this. Um, and on that note, 
that's going to be the end of the stream. <laughs> I hope you guys, uh, wait, I'm not gonna do the outro. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, on the Cherry Lux channel, uh, there's a new video here. I could, like, link the video. I'm pretty sure I still have it up. Um, let me link the video in the chat. Share. Copy link. Um, that's the link to the vlog. Go and check it out. Um, yeah. Um, I guess I could real quick talk about it. Um, the Cherry Log channel was created because I wanted a channel to put vlogs. Um, and you might notice they're not like like my old vlogs, they're not- they don't follow the same- they follow a similar format, 